Reading with your kids. Well, hello there, Stop. You are looking so fantastic. Come on and please have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We're coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are an iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. And we are so happy that you're part of our beautiful family. That is the best award ever that you would take time to be with us today. Our guest today is Larissa Hunsick. She's coming to us from Berlin, Germany to tell us about her brand new book, Opposites, which is published by our friends at Familius. Before we begin our transatlantic adventure to Berlin, I want to let you know that this episode of the podcast is brought to you by I Can Handle It by Laurie Wright. If you are around kids these days, you may have noticed that many of them don't realize how very capable they really are. Many kids haven't had practice solving their own problems, and, and therefore they think that they're just not able to. Kids need to know that they're quite capable of handling situations they encounter in everyday life and capable of handling the emotions that come from those situations as well. Practicing handling the times that life throws you a curveball like, uh, you know, missing shoes and having to turn off the TV and wanting a pat and can't have one or making a mistake. Kids learn best through repetition, and after reading this book and hearing the mantra, I can handle it over and over again, they will identify with the child in the story, they will realize that they are just like him, and they will declare to all that they can handle it. You can learn more about I Can Handle It by Laurie Wright and all of the books in her Mindful Mantra series by going to lauriewriter.com. That's I Can Handle It by Laurie Wright. This episode of the podcast is also brought to you by With the Courage of a Mouse, book one in the Superhero School series by Donna Sager-Cowan. You know, Donna Sager-Cowan, she's, she's a superhero just like so many authors who donated to the Family Independent Shelter, sending great books for those homeless young moms to read with their young babies, helping them develop a love of learning and re learning and reading and, and hopefully helping them to break the cycle of poverty and homelessness. And With the Courage of a Mouse is a super book for, for kids of all ages, but especially middle grade kids ages 7 to 12. Now, Cat the Cat wants a home, a family, and friends she can count on. Suddenly, she finds herself in Sweet Meadows. Now, that's a long way from the alley she calls home. And Cat discovers that she can talk, but she can't decide if she's dreaming or if she's dead. Simon is a mouse, and he is having the worst day ever. I mean, he woke up, and instead of celebrating his first day at superhero school, he's found out that he's on the breakfast menu twice. A hawk thought that he'd be a great easy meal. And now there's a cat that's uh, looking to make a, make a meal out of Simon, too. Will Simon arrive at, arrive at superhero school? Join the entire superhero school gang for their first adventure with the courage of a mouse. The superhero school series, book one, a middle grade chapter book for ages seven to twelve. Now the book focuses on courage, friendship, and finding the superhero inside all of us. The series touches on common life themes and challenges with humor, patience, and self improvement techniques. The superhero school series, book one, with the courage of a mouse, by Donna Sager Cowan. You can find it wherever books are sold. We also want to let you know that this episode of the podcast is brought to you by our friends at Kid Curated Books. Kid Curated Books is a wonderful online service that offers monthly book box subscriptions for children ranging in age from infant to teenagers. Now, now don't go rolling your eyes saying, oh, it's just another subscription service. L let me tell you how Kid Curated Books is different. Kid Curated Books doesn't just send each child the same tired old book box. In fact, seldom are two boxes ever identical because Kid Curated Books understands that no two kids are identical. Uh, what do you do when you first sign up? You, you fill out a survey. And then they also ask for, for subsequent feedback from the kids. And based on that feedback, Kid Curated Books creates a custom book box designed especially for each child that will engage, excite, and educate them. 
Each monthly delivery arrives in a colorful box that is packaged like a present and addressed directly to the child. Kids love getting packages. I mean, I love getting packages. Subscribe to Kid Curated Books today, and we will provide an amazing reading experience for your kids, no matter what their age. Now, I understand that you may not be ready to commit to a subscription. Well, Kid Curated Books also offers an array of gift boxes for baby showers, holidays, and birthday. Check it out today by going to kidcuratedbooks.com. I am so excited. We have a wonderful, wonderful guest. We're going to be speaking about creativity and a wonderful new children's book coming to us from our friends at Familius. From Berlin in Germany, our, our guest is the author and the illustrator of Opposites, a great new book. Please welcome to the show, Larissa Hunsick. Larissa, how are you? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. I forgot to mention that uh, that uh, joining Larissa is her beautiful daughter, Matilda. She's hanging out with us, listening, and uh, maybe she'll pop in, maybe not. That's that's uh, totally mm-hmm. up to her. We will see. She needs to learn English in school. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid she might not learn good English from me, but we'll give our best. We'll try. So tell us about Opposites. Um, so I should start to talk about opposites. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it's a, a book for, for the toddler. So mm-hmm. for the younger reader and, um, what can I say? I'm, I'm, uh, a huge part of my art and illustration is out of clay. So there's a huge process behind doing clay figures and to put them in a light tent and to photograph them and then later they they jump into photoshop and then i do post-production with them so i think i need to explain that because the whole book is out of the i use the clay material to explain opposites for example i did a big clay blob Mm -hmm. like you know and a small clay blob Mm-hmm. Uh, in opposite to each other to explain to give parents the chance to look at the book and and to explain what big and small means so that they can say oh yeah look little little kid there is the the big one and this is the small one mm-hmm. you know it's it, it some people who who aren't parents or or who are parents of of older kids may have forgotten how challenging it can be sometimes to kind of help uh, explain things that we kind of take for granted like opposites to to help our our younger kids kind of understand those concepts um it it doesn't come naturally you have to work with kids to help them understand that yes I think usually you, you, you take your environment, mm-hmm. right? So you say that's a small dog or a big dog or a small tree and a, a small flower and a big tree. And, uh, for, uh, in, in the beginning of the, in the concept phase of the book, we thought about something like that to play with animals or with, you know, uh, uh environmental things re- uh, related to the environment of the kids. But then we, we kept it totally, uh, abstract, uh, to explain it in an abstract way, uh, how opposites, um, are, mm-hmm. uh, 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 let me find another for example together or alone um i expressed like you know, there is a bunch of blobs sticking together and another one only by uh, himself or herself or itself i don't know what to say uh, and uh, yeah i think for us it totally worked out uh, we will see what uh, parents and kids will say to that yeah, I, I'm excited. You know, I, I had a chance in preparation for the interview. I had a chance to um, uh, uh, creep. Well, my kids call it creeping, but but explore your website. And yeah. there's some magnificent works of art. And um, I'm right now I'm just looking at your um, mask series. And um, yeah. Larissa went and she was um, uh, working at a, 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 a summer camp and just experimented with uh, creating different masks with, with different mediums. Uh, tell us, um, well, well, certainly want to t- talk a little bit about that project, but also tell you, uh, how did you get into art and, and, and 
becoming an artist for a living and um and getting the courage to kind of go out and experiment with different materials and different mediums yes i guess so first of all it's in my genes i don't uh-huh. know i i can remember myself being interested in many different uh, uh craft and things when I was a kid and later um, it became a real passion to to explore mainly uh, material in many uh, in different ways so um, and then I did besides uh, my, my job as a graphic designer I, I, I did a um, how can I say it sometimes uh, I did a um, a uh, training or a one year class uh, for photography and uh, after that I started uh, to to deep dive into uh, more into illustration and uh, I, I think I combine those things most of the time I do something with material I sculpt it uh, and then I photograph it so I never do exhibitions or books showing the the, the actual sculpture. They are all the time photographs, and uh, uh, and as I say, uh, most of the time they go there where uh, that they they um, they uh, uh, sorry mm-hmm. the way through the post production, like you know, Illustrator, mm-hmm. uh, Photoshop, or Adobe Sketch, and I, I draw on a tablet on top of the photos, and it's a combination, yeah. And I think I'm, I'm really, it, it really, um, I calm down when I do it, and uh, I, f- I find my peace when I do it, and that's why I, I, I do it. Uh huh. Neat. It's uh, one of the things I'm. I'm, I'm interested in is, is how would you in, in, encourage parents in, in terms of, of, of helping them inspire their kids to be more creative and, and to, and to take risks in, ex, in expressing, expressing themselves artistically? Yeah. So I think I have really two really good tips. First of all, buy your kid a huge desk. Okay. Not the smaller ones. You know, I never understand the the concept of small table for small kids. <laughs> I never get it. Because you don't have the space for material and pans and paper and only a small paper. So I I did it from the beginning. I bought a big table for Matilda and put everything on it. And then we sat together there and uh, started crafting and drawing and uh, uh, became creative together and the other thing is I have a several boxes of material and uh, because kids are you know sometimes really really bored of having all the time the same material so every every week or month I changed material and gave her new new one even the the, the smaller kids are really thankful for new stuff and uh, to experiment and yeah, it kept us busy to be creative with a lot of things. Yeah, I think, I, mm-hmm. I, I think that's one of the things that we forget. I, I certainly wasn't as aware of it uh, when my kids were younger as I, as I would have liked to have been. Uh, I think a lot of folks think, oh, creative art, here's some crayons and here's some paper, go for mm-hmm. it. But there, there really is, is a universe of materials that kids mm-hmm. can use to be creative. Yeah. Yeah, I think the combination uh, of everything uh, is the is the is the way of exp- uh, the way of keeping it interesting and fantastic. If you have always the crayons and always the pencil and always the same paper there, you know, then maybe uh, even for me as an adult, uh, you know, I, I come become quite bored of the things. So I need to add something new, and I guess yeah. Then you besides the. The, the boxes in our homes, we use the, the nature and the environments to find things. You know, when we when we travel to the Baltic Sea here in Germany, then we collect uh, stones and uh, nature material overall and bring it with us home and start playing with this with it. So it's a real pleasure to to draw 
uh, tiny faces on stones or to build out of stone faces in the sand on the beach, for example. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I think one, also one of the things that, that a lot of parents forget is that in inspiring creativity in our kids, it's, that's not just about preparing them for a career as an artist or a graphic designer. That, you know, being able to be creative with paper or with clay or with stone, mm. that's the foundation that they may use to be creative in as an engineer or as a doctor, yeah. as a scientist uh, later on in life. Yes, I agree totally. And I, do, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't know uh, how it really uh, uh, um, works. But yeah, I can I can imagine that the, the the way of you know combining things, doing with every with with every piece to think about what can we do with it is a kind of you know way of thinking in a positive way to find a solution for things and find something new for things and. Yes. I, I I like that. I like that. What a great exercise to do. And what a fun exercise to do uh, with with your child is just look at something and say, what can we do with this? Yes. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Yeah, and, find, uh, and I think this is important to find a solution together mm -hmm. and to be a role model for your kids and to to really, even if you're not a you know graphic designer, as you said, or artist, even to force yourself to find something what a stone can be, um, is is a is a nice challenge for adults too, and to to inspire their kids to do the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and what a great uh, way to kind of shift and say, okay, what can the stone be, and now what can yeah. you be? Yeah, and really open up their minds to all the possibilities that that's out there. And for what them. can they be together? Yes, you know? yes, mm -hmm. yes. I love that. Well, speaking yeah. of together, how did you get together with our friends over at Familius? Can you repeat the question? I was wondering how you got together with your our friends over at Familius to create opposites. How we came together? How yes. How they uh, they found me via uh, uh, the portfolio platform of Behance ah. uh, of Adobe. You know that, yeah? I don't. I'm not uh, aware of it. No. There is a really great uh, portfolio platform from Adobe, and I I um, I publish there my work. And it's not it's not like Instagram where you know you you, you put posts and pictures online. You really uh, um, post uh, projects, you know, bigger bigger things. And I do it. I use it for clients and for myself and you know, for my promotion. And yeah, and the, the director from for me just found me there and just wrote me if I want to do a book with them. And then we spent, uh, I don't know, half a year to find out what concept uh, it could be. And then we found the opposites and uh, have several other concepts in, in the pocket, maybe for the future. You never know. But yeah, that's yeah. That, that's the story. You know, you mentioned Instagram, and, uh, and and it never occurred because when I go on Instagram, I you know, there's lots of pictures of people doing silly things. But there yeah. are, especially one of our one of our international students who um, is from Italy and studying architecture. I love his Instagram because he's always finding really interesting architecture and sharing it and. Architecture wasn't something that I was really um, especially interested in, but I love kind of looking at it through his eyes. And I, I, I think one of the things that we can do as parents is, is kind of help our kids understand that all the social media we have today, it can be more than just um, posting pictures of yourself doing something yeah. stupid. It can be a real expression of, of your creativity. Yeah, that's also true, and uh, I, that's uh, that's exactly what I want to teach Matilda. Don't show your lips or your, you know, your body or you know yourself all the time. Show the people what you did, mm -hmm. or what you can add to the world. How you people maybe show something which uh, inspires other people. 
So, so I, but I don't want to judge all those, you know, those figures who want to show themselves. So it's their way. But, you know, my way, um, I prefer the other way to use social media for your work, to, to show it to others and maybe get in contact with other people uh, through that uh, way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's important for me as a mother and for me as a person. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love that. Well, tell folks, speaking of, of uh, social media and the internet, tell us where we can connect with you and folks can find out more about what Larissa is up to and, and see some of your great work. I think I had I had some problems understanding the questions again. The oh, question sure. Again, can you repeat it? Absolutely. Can we wanted to know where people can find your website and uh, where we can find you on social media? Yeah. So I, uh, with my illustration work, I'm really busy on Behance, uh, the platform from Adobe. It's uh, Behance.com, I guess, and my nickname is Novemberkind. I think you would you would uh, pronounce it November kind, but uh, in in Germany uh, kind is a child, mm -hmm. so it's November child. But in Germany it's November kind. And uh, the other platform I really use is Instagram, and uh, under uh, at Larissa uh, Honzek, without a underscore, just Larissa Honzek together. Well, we've been talking today to the author of the brand new book, Opposites, from our friend at Familius, Larissa Hunsick. Larissa, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. And Matilda, thanks for hanging out with us. She went through the room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to her room. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show, Larissa. Thank you, too. That was really lovely to talk with you. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Dennis Matthew. Dennis is the author of Bello, the Cello. We had a really, really fascinating conversation uh, about his book, about friendships, uh, about building community, and, and as Dennis says, finding our own song. You don't want to miss it. It's a really, really in really informative and really fun interview. The next episode, Dennis Matthew. Hey, you've heard me talk about the Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program. It, one of the things that just amazes authors is that they think that once, once they've finished the book and they hand it into a publisher, whether it's an independent publisher or a traditional publisher, they think, whoa, my, my job's over. No! Your job's just beginning because then you go from author to marketing director. Because, yeah, you really are. You, you're, you're responsible for marketing your book. You will, if you're, you're with a, a, a traditional publisher like Familius, you will get some support. But if you're an independent publisher, you are out there all on your own. And even with traditional publishers, you still need to do a lot of the work yourself. And that can be very, very daunting, especially for a person who's never thought of, of marketing. Well, that's where we think we can help you. The Reading with the Kids Certified Great Read Program. It's a wonderful program to help let folks know that your book is worthy of their consideration. We've gathered a wonderful team of parents, teachers, and kids. And if they believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. And with that status comes a whole lot of promotional tools that will help you help your book stand out amongst the crowd of books that are published every single month. You can learn more by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to thank Larissa Hunsick. Check out her book, Opposites, from our friends at Familius Publishing. We also want to thank from Matilda for hanging around with us. We want to thank our sponsors, Donna Seger-Cowan and her book, With the Courage of a Mouse, the Superhero School Series, book one. Check it out today. We also want to thank I Can Handle It by Laurie Wright. You can go to her website, lauriewriter.com, and check out the I Can Handle It and all of her Mindful Mantra books. And, of course, we want to thank our friends at kidcuratedbooks.com. And what a wonderful subscription service. 
your child can receive a, a box of books that were specifically picked out for your child based on, on their feedback, based on their taste and their preferences. And it's a unique box that is delivered. And it's packaged like a present delivered right to your kid. It's a super, super gift. Uh, a great way to help your child learn to love reading and also learn to love learning. I also want to thank my producer, Fatima Khan. Be sure to check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all of her support. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to read with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.